Okay, well, welcome everyone to the Vision Australia's Dreaming of Streaming webinar. My name is Cassandra and I will be hosting the webinar tonight. Tonight in Dreaming of Streaming, we'll be talking about video on demand streaming. Now, for those of us who are quite new to streaming, it's actually what you're doing right now, which is watching or listening to content over the internet. Tonight, we're focusing just on video on demand streaming, which is where you can watch catch up TV, movies or other videos when you want online. So joining me here at the Vision Australia Sydney office tonight to talk about access to video on demand services are our three wonderful panelists. So first we have Alex Farley, CEO of Media Access Australia. Good evening, Cassandra. We also have Paul Paradigm, Adaptive Technology Consultant here at Vision Australia. Hi, Cass. And Scott Erickson, Adaptive Technology Trainer at Vision Australia. Hi. So welcome to you all and thanks for being here tonight. Tonight we're streaming live from Sydney and we want you to participate by asking questions live. Now there are two ways that you can ask questions tonight for our panellists. The first one is by sending an SMS and you can send that text message to 0438 792 407. So that's 0438 792 407. The second way that you can ask a question is by email. Now you can email us at webinar at visionaustralia.org. Now that's the same email address we've sent you all the previous information about the webinar. So if in doubt, you can just hit reply and we'll be getting that information. Now please include your question and your name in the message. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible tonight and we'll be reading out the questions and the first names of those who submitted them. So hopefully you'll know if it's your question we're answering. So once again, that's SMS 0438 792 407 or email webinar at visionaustralia.org. We'll also be providing a transcript of tonight's webinar after the session. So if you miss something in the moment, don't worry, you'll be able to catch up a bit later on exactly what was said. So now let's get started dreaming of streaming. So tonight we're really lucky to be joined by Alex Farley. Alex, you've had lots of experience in the international sector working on access to media for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what's happening around the world at the moment in relation to video on demand and access to these services? Yeah, sure, Cass. So the, I think the thing that's interesting about what's happening in other places is that, not surprisingly, the places that are most advanced in terms of video on demand services with audio description are the ones that actually have audio description on television, which of course we don't have in Australia yet. And um, of course, the, the two countries that most come to mind on that are the USA and the UK, and they are the ones that have probably the most advanced services. So. Um, in the UK, for example, you've got um, the BBC, which is a bit like the ABC here, and that has um, almost uh, three quarters of its programs that it shows on TV are then available on a video on demand um, service with um, audio description. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a reasonably good transition. And then um, on the Sky channels, which is a bit like Foxtel here, uh, they've got fairly mixed levels, so nowhere near the same levels as the BBC, but growing numbers of services. And of course, that one that a lot of people would have heard of, which is Netflix, which has really been the pioneer in those sort of more independent services that are not related to a, a TV service. Um, the US is a little less developed, so there's sort of patches of um, audio description appearing on video on demand. And that's partially because they've got a, a thing called the 21st Century Video Accessibility Act, which is pushing along access. And um, of course, Netflix is an American company, and that's really where it all started. Um, once you get beyond that, it's really patchy stuff. So um, and surprisingly, um, New Zealand, which a, a lot of the people watching the webinar tonight will know, has an audio description service on TV. The only um, audio description service they have otherwise is on Netflix, and that's because Netflix does that everywhere. Mm. So what about then in Australia? What's happening here in terms of access to video on demand services? Yeah, so Australia, of course, is um, a little behind in, in many ways. Of course, the biggest thing we're behind on is we don't have a TV service yet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, somewhat surprisingly, I suppose, for some people, uh, the ABC 
offers an audio description service on its iView platform, which is the video on demand one. And I think we'll probably talk a little bit more about that later in terms of which versions of iView it actually works on and that kind of thing. And then uh, of course, when Netflix launched here um, a few months ago, somewhat surprisingly for us, but pleasantly surprisingly, they, um, they actually announced audio description a couple of days after they launched. And, uh, and that's just a reflection that they were doing that everywhere around the world. And that service seems to be growing. But otherwise, the only other stuff we've really seen in Australia is uh, the odd YouTube clip, some uh, you know corporate information, government information that's out there, but um, very early days for us, I'm afraid. So in your opinion then, Alex, how do you think that, that developments in the international scene will impact what's happening here in Australia? Okay, I think something that's really important for people to understand is that these services are actually international and the, the people that provide them think internationally. Um, what I mean by that is, um, so unlike a, a standard TV service that you might watch here, like a 9, 10, SBS, 7 or um, ABC, things like Netflix, they just say, okay, we've got loads of different territories, different parts of the world, and probably the only thing that really divides them is language and, um, and whether we're there yet or not. And, um, and so when you see something like audio description happening on one of those services, it's very easy for them to quickly translate that to other places. And, and if I just use Netflix as an example, uh, Netflix originally wasn't planning to have audio description and um, for people who have watched it, there's a, a really good show called Daredevil on there, which features a blind superhero. And in America, there was some um, litigation that was going on where people were suing them because they hadn't audio described that show, saying, well, it's a blind superhero, it's got to be audio described. And, um, and so they decided to put that on. And then literally days later, it appeared on all the other territories where they're operating. So here in Australia and in New Zealand, we got audio description straight away. And, and that's what tends to happen. So things that are happening in other places will filter through to Australia. And the good thing about video on demand services is that they're all using the same basic technology. So you don't have you know, different kinds of platforms. You don't have different television systems that make it difficult for them to not show it in other places. So what you're watching in America, same system here, same system in Europe, same system in Asia. So I think the, the exciting thing is we're starting to see these services come through and that will translate into Australia. And what we can do is try and speed that process up a little. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Alex. And uh, Paul, we've heard from Alex that there are in Australia then just a few uh, video on demand services offering that audio description. Now, audio description, just in case people haven't um, heard of it before, is the narration of the visual elements of the video uh, in between the dialogue. So you can see what's happening in the action of the film as well. So, Paul, uh, of those ones that we do have here, so Netflix and ABC iView, can you explain to us how we go about locating those programs that do have that audio description? Maybe what, how do you find them on ABC iView? Okay, so ABC iView um, um, is primarily available um, on the, the iPhone, the iOS platform. It is available on other platforms. Um, to my knowledge at this time, it, the audio description and accessibility is best on the, uh, the iOS devices like the iPhone, um, the iPad, iPod Touch. Um, to locate uh, the audio described content, it's just a matter of going to the um, A to Z program um, listing, which is off the main menu of that application. Um, and then um, selecting that option, it will then come up with a list of um, programs in, in a, an A to Z listing. And there's a little sub um, a category or a button uh, at the top of that list, which is called audio description. If you just um, press that or um, double tap, if you're a, a screen ready user on a, an iOS device, it will then only show you a listing of the uh, programs that are audio described. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. And uh, Scott, how about Netflix? How do you find the audio described content there? Is there a lot on there? Yeah, there's there's quite a bit actually. Uh, you can you can actually log in after you've logged in um, to the Netflix uh, website. And bear in mind, you have to do this um, using a PC or a Mac. You um, the Netflix um, 
iOS app or the Apple TV, they won't actually show this. But uh, when you log in to the site, um, there is a, a listing of um, audio described content and it shows all the, all the things. Um, strangely, if you're using a PC and you click on the, uh, any of the shows, uh, you won't be able to play them. You'd have to use your iPhone or your Apple TV or even the Mac to play them. But under the PC, you, um, it's not accessible. But at least you can see that list. And how, uh, how have you found watching programs that are audio described on Netflix? It's fascinating because you get, you get all, the, all the information that you will have missed out on when you're watching some, some of these movies. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes you can watch movies with friends and if you're lucky, you have a friend who describes it really well. Others like to watch the movie and don't want to always tell you what's going on. But um, I think, you know, having audio description just in general has made a huge difference to the, certainly the way I, I consume content. And, and yeah, it's, it makes you just want to watch more because it, it, you, you really, particularly if it's a series, you really want to um, find out what happens next. and. Really, and you remember it as well. I find that you remember, it. and you can talk about it with other people because you know what has happened, and you can talk about it with your sighted friends or your, or even your other blind friends if they've watched it. Fantastic! Thanks, Scott. Now, do, we'll just remind people how they can ask a question tonight. So you can ask one live of our panelists right now. You can text zero four three eight seven nine two four zero seven. Or you can email us at webinar at visionaustralia.org. Now we have had a question come through from Anna. How do I find the audio described movies on Netflix? Now Scott, is it the same way as you just described how yes. you find the other content? Sorry. Um, yes, yes it is. So you, um, you have to, once you've logged in, uh, you can, uh, you, you'll find a list of all the audio described content and you just pretty much have to go through that list and find you know, what is movies and what is um, TV shows, I, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if you're a screen reader user, mm -hmm. um, it's Paul here. Um, the easiest way for you to do that is to actually just search on the word audio description um, and uh, it's actually a link that you need to click before the listing comes up. Um, it is uh, not formatted as a list, it's kind of vertically um, listed, but if you were just to um, move from link to link, you'd at least get the names of the, the TV shows or movies that um, you're looking for. Yeah, in cases like this, um, it does help to know your screen reader, um, things like heading commands and um, particularly the uh, find command of your particular screen reader, it's a really um, huge um, advantage um, particularly to find those words audio description. Um, there's no edit box on the web page to find them. You actually have to use your screen reader's find command to actually search for those words within the page. And uh, we've had a question come in from Janine. Are there any good series available on ABC iView? Is the audio description good quality? So Scott, have you been watching any of the programs on ABC iView which have audio description? Yeah, I've watched quite a few. Uh, I've watched uh, um, Glitch, which is this new one that uh, a lot of people have been talking about. That I think I've watched about five uh, episodes of that now. Um, and the audio description is really good. Um, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of, quite a lot of stuff there. Um, definitely, I, I definitely recommend checking it out and you'll, you, you will find um, a lot of good content. You'll certainly find several things that I'm sure you're interested in. Great. And we've had another question come in from Violetta. Are the video on demand streaming services for people of all ages? So Paul, maybe you can answer that one. Um, well, certainly on um, iView, they are um, for all ages. Um, I can't really comment about, um, I'm just having a look now. Um, I, I don't see um, a lot of um, content for young people that's audio described on um, Netflix. Um, uh, please bear in mind that I'm vision impaired and that I'm just looking at pictures here, but I don't see a lot of um, material for um, the younger audience. Mm -hmm. um, bear in mind uh, also that uh, when you use Netflix, um, there are filters 
um, that get put in place when you log in. So for example, if you're uh, setting up your Netflix for the family to watch and there are young children, you would log in uh, with a child parameter and that would then limit um, what's displayed, even in the, the listings and catalogues mm -hmm. um, of what's displayed. But at the moment, I'm not logged in as um, um, a child, so I can't really see anything at all that's for um, young viewers. Maybe I could just have a comment sure. on the ABC, actually, because I, I was involved in the, the setting up of the ABC iView services and as, sort of, as a consultant on it, if you like. And um, one of the things they were really careful about was to make sure that um, the the mix of programming included children's programming, included popular stuff, and then it's a mix of um, international and Australian content. And this is always a, a really difficult decision for people because um, the, the question I'm often asked is, you know, well, what do blind people like watching? And I said, well, what does everybody else like watching? Because they're exactly the same. And, um, and, you know, I think sometimes that they think by asking one or two blind people, they get a a totally valid sample of what the world likes but and, you know my reaction is well blind people like what everybody else does and so the ABC was quite conscious when they were setting up IV to make sure they got that good mix of course we want more and more hours and that will give us better variety but um, we, we'll see that come through I did notice on Netflix there was yes. one there yeah I've seen I've yeah, gone yeah, through it a little that. bit now and there's about three yeah. um, that look like they're aiming for a younger audience great and um, this is a question either Paul or Scott, you might be interested in answering that's come through. What does someone need to get started to stream video on demand? Okay, um, for the best, best experience, um, I'd go uh, an iPhone or an iPod or an iPad, or even if you can get it an Apple TV, but the Apple TV, um, <clears throat> It's a great device, but it requires a bit more of a bit more thought uh, to put into it. Uh, you know, because you need a TV as well um, to to use it. Um, so, my solution would be if you've got a phone uh, and, and and it's an iPhone, generally you'll be able to um, watch some some great audio content on there. That's going to be your most optimal experience to use iOS, some form of iOS device, um, and I think. Whether you use VoiceOver or whether you, um, you know, um, both the apps are accessible. Uh, iView and um, Netflix are very accessible with VoiceOver. Uh, there's one little trick with VoiceOver. When you scroll the screen in the Netflix app, you, <clears throat> when you uh, look down through, through your shows, VoiceOver doesn't always um, scroll. You have to actually scroll VoiceOver to um, see some of the shows. but. You know that'll that'll be fixed probably in an update. Obviously, all the apps are free, so uh, that's another advantage as well. Right, thanks. Something else I was just going to add to yeah. that actually. Um, the the ABC iView service, which which obviously is a free service, um, what they're doing is they're gradually rolling it out across different platforms. So they they went Apple and Android first, mm -hmm. and the uh, the one that's probably the most in demand is the PC version, and they're telling us at the moment that that will be ready by the beginning of September, and they're actually hoping it's sometime in August, but they're, they're guaranteeing by the um, beginning of September. So hold out for that, and that's um, a free service, easy to access. So, yeah. Right, thanks. Whereas Netflix is a paid-for subscription service. Yes, that's right. Although I think the difference. first month is still free. So, yeah, um, yeah, the first yeah, month's free. Yeah. Mm. So you can try it before you lock yourself in. Mm. Yeah, but the app itself, once you've paid for the net, you know, the subscription, um, the, you don't have to pay for the app, but you do have to pay for the subscription once right. you've passed sure. your free trial. So. Now, here's a question that has come in from Susan. Thanks, Susan. If you wish to watch an audio described program with a partner or friend and they don't want to listen to the audio description, is there a way to play the program with the audio description in a separate track so only you hear it? Paul? Any ideas? Um, no, there's no way of doing that because um, the the platform only supports one audio stream at once and that's across all of the devices. You either play the audio described um, stream or you don't. And just by way of a short explanation, the way that um, these services work um, is that uh, you select, it's like selecting another language track. So if, you, if we use uh, uh, Netflix, for example, as an example, 
Um, the way that you do it is the way that it works uh, is that it's recorded like it was a French version or, or a, a German version, and that's the one that you play. It doesn't play back to simultaneous audio streams. So the only way you could really do that is if you had two devices and somehow you magically sync them together. But um, I don't think that's um, it's really feasible to do that. It's I know that some of the set top boxes for. Um, um, for the speaking content, um, like the channel information, have a separate um, audio stream facility, but um, these applications don't cater for two audio streams. But I, I would say you all want to watch with audio description. You want to do it as a shared experience. Yes. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd definitely, I, I'd say, you know, i am definitely watch with, with, with it because the, the other sighted person watching it may learn something about, you know, the description or about, you know, all kinds of things. I think, yeah, I think, no, they can watch it with audio description. If they don't like it, they can I don't know, go and do something else. I guess if you were if you're in a a family situation and um, it wasn't suitable, depending on the account that you sign up with Netflix, you can have two t simultaneous streams. So if you started playing them uh, roughly at a similar time, um, you could use a device like an iPhone or an iPod and just have pop ahead one a single earbud, for example, in while the other stream was played, say, on a smart TV um, or through an Apple TV, and then you could have the best of both worlds, but you would need two devices. You and, can, your, and your internet would have to have the bandwidth to be able to play um, to yeah, um, stream so simultaneously. It sounds like there's ways around it, but no easy yes answer to that question. No, 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 no. That's, that's a dreaming thing. That's a, <laughs> something to dream, continue of. So uh, another one that uh, has come in, we've actually got a couple of questions that have come in on this same topic. Can you watch old TV shows as well as those that are currently available, or is it just what's been on recently, Alex? Okay, uh, well, the the programming is often a mix of um, repeats and new stuff, so um, that that's what you're going to get. Uh, the Netflix stuff tends to be older um, and you know with a few newer releases, but um, the ABC again, it's just trying to do the popular things, and some of those. Old, old favourites are actually very popular shows on the ABC, so that's what you'll see. Mm. So just to elaborate a little bit um, on that, Cass, uh, for example, with um, uh, Netflix, you could go back and watch all of, for example, I'm just trying to think something off the top of my head. Cards. House of Cards. Yeah. Okay. Orange is the New Black. Yeah. Well, but for some older stuff, stuff like oh. old Star Trek episodes, yeah, um, um, Stargate, Stargate Atlantis, they would have... Um, with those particular ones, they have full series, and there's quite a lot of um, full series going back even through into the um, the 80s and the 70s. Not a huge amount, um, but that um, list um, is growing. So. You're showing your preferences there too, Paul. You're obviously a sci-fi guy. I am, so. all right. <laughs> and now we've had another question come in um, from Karen. Is Netflix constantly adding audio described content? So at the moment, not everything is audio described. Is that right, Alex? Oh, no, no, by far not described, I would say. And it, it doesn't seem to be a particular pattern. So um, there's there's just bits appearing randomly almost. And um, we just before the, uh, the webinar tonight, we were having a look just to see what the latest stuff is and there's a, a lot more than I last checked a few weeks ago. So yes. yeah, it's there. And, and I think part of that is because um, unlike TV services, there's no sort of fixed regulation quotas or anything like that. So it's really, I think, a question of what they get hold of next and um, decide to pop that up. Yeah, and those regulation quotas, they're overseas quotas. Oh, well, I was gonna say, yeah. They, yeah, but they're more on TV shows so right. rather yeah. than um, video on demand shows. So. Great. Now I'll just do another reminder about how people can ask questions. We're actually having a great number of questions come through, but keep them coming. We'd love to hear from you. So you can SMS a question to 0438 792407. That's 0438 792407. Or you can email us webinar at visionaustralia.org. And a really easy way to Remember that, it's just to apply to one of the emails we sent you previously about how to log on to the webinar. So that's webinar at visionaustralia.org. Now, we've talked a bit about how you can access these services using audio description, 
but we know there's more to access than audio description. It's also about the platforms themselves. So I'm really interested to think about a little bit how you can access those platforms um, in different ways. So Paul, as someone who has low vision, how do you access video on demand streaming platforms? Oh. I guess in I, I use multiple different ways depending on the situation. Mm. If I'm viewing um, material programming for myself, my preference is to use um, a tablet-sized or a laptop-sized device mm -hmm. because um, for me as somebody with quite low, very low vision, what I need is something to be really close to me. And um, when I'm, I guess, watching um, TV with the family, um, that's one thing, but when I'm watching it alone, my preference is to um, have a very close working distance. And I'm talking about, you know, 10 or 15 centimetres. Um, to me, it doesn't really matter um, that it's an 80 inch screen or a, a 20 inch screen. I still need to be pretty close um, to be able to focus and, and see that. And I guess this is why I really quite like streaming because I can just lie there in bed or um, at a desk and be able to see a lot more at a close working distance. And I, I think that um, a lot of low vision people um, will empathise with this. Um, so that's how I view it. It's actually been quite um, good for me in so far as because I can use a close working distance without having to turn my head um, because it's a, a, such a large screen. It has meant that I'm able to um, view uh, stuff with subtitles. So I've never been able to comfortably read um, subtitles um, on a larger screen. As I say, to having to turn your head because you're sitting so close uh, makes it a little bit difficult. But with the smaller screen, I've actually sat down and watched uh, a, a two hour movie and read the whole thing. It did require a little bit of pausing, but I guess that's the great thing about using streaming as well, is that I can pause it. And if I want to have a look at something in the background, I can use a, a Zoom feature um, of my computer or tablet um, to view that. Um, the other thing that I really like about um, using streaming, because I do use a mix of um, voice and um, my vision, is being able to access the details about the, t the television program or the movie, being able to see who's in it, who, who the directors are, to have a good description of um, um, some of the cast and a description of the movie before I watch it. Watch it because um, I don't have access to that um, otherwise. I can't see scrolling titles um, if I'm sitting watching the TV in the lounge room um, with the family. Thanks, Paul. And uh, you've also, you know, when we were chatting about this uh, prior to webinar, you talked to us me a little bit about Apple TV and, and how that can work for people. Can you explain that a little bit more? So like a a way to watch it such as through Apple TV? I think the beauty of the Apple TV um, uh, for I guess our, our audience would be um, for those people that may not be expert screen reader users um, the Apple TV is a good option aside from the initial setup which can be a little bit problematic but um, you could get um, help from your family or help from Vision Australia um, to um, set up the Apple TV. But once it's um, up and running, it's really um, a matter of using the little remote control. It only has a few keys on it, um, an, uh, a directional arrow keys, up, down, right, left, and an enter key, and, then a, and two menu keys. And it just means that you don't have to learn to use um, a screen reader or a computer or a tablet. Uh, the uh, the Apple TV does not have screen magnification built into it at this time. It does have a screen reader. So if you, even if you were totally blind or had very low vision, once it's set up, you can have full access um, to the uh, programming material that's available um, through the Apple TV. And that includes um, the um, Apple's own material plus the stuff that's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. And Scott? As a person who is blind, how do you find the platform's accessibility? Um, maybe what's currently accessible using a screen reader? Um, well, obviously uh, ABC iView is using the iPhone, um, Netflix. Netflix is a strange one because obviously the website's accessible in terms of you can use your PC or your Mac um, to log into the site and, and you can sign up, you can uh, view as we were talking about before you can view your list of shows but 
What you can't do if you're using Windows is actually play the material, which I hope they'll, I, I would hope they'd address that, um, you know, soon or, or well, it would be nice if it was yesterday, but, um, you know, it'll happen. But um, like Paul, I, I, I like to watch, you know, lots of, lots of material and I, like him, I have lots of devices to watch it on. Uh, but again, the Apple TV is, is another thing that I'd say um, is an option. Um, in terms of screen reading um, that's accessible, Netflix is far is um, the best I'd say on iOS or the Apple TV, which we've mentioned before. But uh, and um, obviously, iView um, is only on the, uh, the on iOS at the moment. But for me, it'll be great when it come, when it eventually does you know come to the PC because there are times when you're on your computer and you know, you want to, you're doing things on your computer and you, you found the name of a show you want to watch and you're like, oh, well, I can't watch it on here. I have to watch it on something else. In terms of Netflix um, watching on the Mac, if you don't want to pause or control or do anything with the show, if you just want to watch it from start to end, you can play it, but um, you have to basically then sit there for the hour or two hours or however long it is because you have no way of stopping it and starting it. You can, you can just play the show. And that does work on the Mac, um, which is good. And now, uh, all of these services, of course, need an internet connection. We're having a, quite a few questions come through about data and bandwidth, like what does it actually take mm -hmm. from an uh, internet perspective? Um, Alex, can you just mention a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, the, the thing I would say to you is if you're out and about, um, don't try and watch these things just using your normal um, phone data allowance because um, movie and video material chews through that incredibly quickly and um, you'll end up with a great big phone bill. The best thing to do is um, go and find somewhere with some decent Wi-Fi, whether that's at home or um, you know, there's lots of public Wi-Fi around the place, and um, and do it that way. So I mean, typically people in homes these days have 500 gigabytes, terabytes, or whatever. And I've got uh, three teenage kids, and um, we ain't got anywhere close to our home limits yet. So um, you know, it, it doesn't use up those. But please don't try and do it while you're going home from work on the train or something, because uh, you'll blow your allowance straight away. Yeah. And I'll just put another reminder out for questions, how you can ask a question tonight. Keep them coming. We'd love to get them. It's a text message to 0438792407 or an email to webinar at visionaustralia.org. Now, I've got a related question to the one I just asked, slightly different. It's from Marie. Can I download a movie to my iPhone through my home Wi-Fi using these services? So is it downloading? It's a bit different to download, it's streaming, isn't it? That's right. And um, I think that, um, um, that most of these, um, pro these services really are relying on you to, to stream to limit the content. Um, otherwise, if you could download them, that you would be you know, infringing someone's copyright. Um, to my knowledge, at this time, there are um, there are no services that actually permit you to download um, and cache them on your computer as far as I know. So you're just watching them online and when you're finished they stay on that platform? That's right. Yeah and I think actually it raises quite a, a useful point which is that you know what actually is a video on demand service and you know there's lots of different definitions of that and we tend to think of it as being it's something that you're going to get via the internet and I'd actually include things like iTunes on that so uh, and some iTunes products you can actually download them and, and watch them later so uh, mm -hmm. but the the general in intention of it and that's why it's called dreaming for streaming is that it's a streaming thing that you, you watch it and it flows away and that's it and if you want to watch it again you have to stream it again yeah and now Alex do you know of any work being done on improving these platforms accessibility um, the, well there is a lot of lobbying going on about that. Yeah. Um, probably the people who are taking that most seriously in the world is the BBC. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they have a, a long-standing um, reputation for sorting out accessibility across all their platforms. And, um, and they have probably the most content in the world as well. So uh, what, you'll, you know, what you'll see is they'll lead the way and others will pick that up. But I, I think the issues are actually 
more around the devices that you're trying to access um, these services through. And, and probably the good news there is that um, everybody keeps talking about Apple, and of course the you know the Apple services generally are extremely accessible, but they're also the most expensive ones. And uh, what we've certainly noticed in our work in the last few years is that the um, Android and other platforms are actually catching up there and they actually are becoming more accessible and of course these video streaming services are supposed to be um, platform neutral in that sense so um, so yeah there's work being done but it's not systematic yeah and we've had a question come in from Coral um, and it's talking about how what your opinions are on iview having audio description as a catch-up service versus it being a uh, broadcasting live on the television and uh, you know it costs download time it's not in your broadcast time you need your own equipment uh, so uh, what's your opinion on the differences Paul? Um, Coral I think my response is as a, a VI person is it's better than nothing mm. um, and uh, as a, an interim measure I think um, that's all. I, that's the only comment that I want to make. Mm. Um, I have internet at home. I don't have um, any huge limits on my internet. Um, it's less common to have um, very low limits on home internet. Um, like we've said, don't watch it while you, you know, on the go. So, in for, from a, a data point of view and a cost mm. uh, point of view, it doesn't really affect me at all. But I mean, ideally, I want to see things live. Mm. I want to see them when my family is watching them, not. A day later. And Scott, you have experience watching audio described television overseas. Yeah, um, I, I was in the UK a few years ago and I happened to watch um, a medical show and I watched at least um, uh, oh, three or four episodes of it. And the amazing uh, thing for me was it was, you know, live television. It was, you know, eight o'clock, 8.30 at night and you could sit down and watch um, audio described TV. And for me, that was just amazing because, I mean, I'd seen audio described stuff before, but never as part of a TV channel. I thought it was just amazing to be able to do that. I mean, and I thought, I wish we had that in Australia. And we're, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. I mean, look, obviously in an ideal world, like Paul said, we'd much rather watch things live. But um, for now, it's it's certainly yeah I agree definitely better than nothing and you know it gives us a taste for what's to come. I mean, if this is the first um, solution, it can only get better from here. And Alex. Well, I'm going to go on a limb. I'm going to say I think it's absolutely crazy. Uh, we're the only country in the world that has a catch-up TV service with audio description, but no audio description on that original TV service. And for for people just to understand what I mean by that. Uh, the programs that you're watching on things like iview are exactly the same as the one that's broadcast and the processes by which they create the audio description are essentially the same and so i just find it extremely strange that uh, the the effort is being put into creating that audio description for something that only a handful of people at the moment can really watch the although everybody talks about the great march of technology and how the world is changing and everything's on the internet uh, the surveys keep showing that the most popular way of consuming content by far is the good old-fashioned television in the corner of the lounge room and that's going to be like that for a long time. So I actually think it's madness and I, I want to see it on both. It's got to be on both like it is in other places in the world. Great. Thanks, Alex. And we've had a, a couple of questions come through. So uh, the first one, a couple about accessing and then a couple about auto description. So I'll do some and the other. Uh, this is from Terry. Uh, do I need an iPhone if I already have an Android? Scott, any ideas? What, you know, in terms of accessing these different types of platforms, and there's more than Netflix and iView, but, yeah, yeah, sure. you know, just... I'd say iPhone if you want the best experience. Um, as far as I know, I don't even think... Um... I don't think the Android version of the iView um, system is actually accessible. Mm -hmm. I don't know if either of you guys have played with it, but I certainly haven't. Um, and Netflix, um, again, I'm not sure. So I, I, I have an Android tablet that I've played with, but not, you know, not to that, yeah. not for that kind of thing. Um, 
you, I wouldn't say an iPhone. If you've already got an Android phone, I wouldn't go out and get it and get an iPhone. Get a um, you know, just get a, an iPod Touch. You know, um, it doesn't have to be an expensive iPod Touch. You can, you know, and, and that will allow you to at least watch um, the the stuff um, or an iPad if you want an iPad. But if you want something just small to watch and you've already got an Android phone, no, no need to go and spend big money and get an iPhone. Just get an iPod Touch. And as long as it's a, an iPod, an iPhone or an iPad, one or the other, um, th th that will be fine. Mm. And we've had another question come through. So I might put this one to Paul. You were talking about Apple TV a little bit earlier. Mm. Uh, this is from Jennifer. Does Apple TV have audio description? If not, are there any plans for Apple to do this in the future? Look, I know that Apple are working f f for their own platform on bringing content out. I can't really comment of how much content there is available because there's unlike um, the uh, the Netflix where you can select a, a, a listing of audio uh, described content, um, there isn't, as far as I know, a way of doing that on the um, the iTunes store. And that's, no, there isn't. No. Yeah, and there isn't on the Apple TV either. So, which is based on the iTunes store. Um, I haven't actually looked at how you would um, sort out which uh, uh, content is available on on Netflix um, on the uh, the Apple TV on the Apple TV, but um, yes, the answer is yes. There is um, some content um, I believe on the iTunes Store, um, but you need to bear in mind that uh, it's a little bit. It's a little at present. It's just a little bit different um, from the way that iTunes and sorry the iView and the the Netflix works mm -hmm. um it's it's uh their system is more like a pay-per-view kind of system where you rent the video um or the TV show um it's available for, to you for about 24 hours and it's a a per view uh, payment so like a TV series might cost you $3 to watch one episode and it may cost you $6 to watch a current um, movie on there with or without audio description, um, but it's there isn't a, a huge amount of um, uh, audio described content available um, through their own services at this time. I've heard anecdotally that there is some content, um, but I can't tell you what that is or how you'd go about locating new titles. Not at this time, and I wouldn't imagine that Apple would publicise it in a huge way until they have a way. Um, that we can actually access that content. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd also just say for people out there, I, I know people quite often have friends in other countries and they um, they exchange emails about what's successful out there. Just be very careful when you're getting advice about which programs on things like um, iTunes may be accessible because iTunes is actually different in different countries. They have different content. Mm -hmm. And we've actually came across something like, like this um, a couple of weeks ago where a, um, a Disney movie popped up on Australian iTunes with audio description and, um, and we were trying to work out where that came from and, um, and people get excited and then they discover that no, actually it doesn't work in Australia but they've already spent their six bucks or whatever and to discover no audio description. So just watch out for that. And I think the same thing goes with um, Netflix. If you're corresponding to people um, overseas, the platform is regionalised and the content that you have in Australia is not the same um, as, as, as it is in the US. If you have a friend that's in the US and they uh, log into their uh, version of um, Netflix, it's the same server you're logging into, but the content is, is regionalised. So in the US, you have a lot more content than you have um, in Australia. And the content will differ. It differs from country to country. The kind of programs that you get in Netflix in the UK well, they may have the same programs. They may have programs on their life, um, on their Netflix that we don't. Just one thing I want yeah. to quickly mention about the Apple TV. Uh, if you have the second generation Apple TV, you're not going to be able to watch audio described content on Netflix. The audio description doesn't actually work. Mm -hmm. um, it's something to do with with the um, version of software on the on the Apple TV. And the the current the the third generation Apple TV and the current one that you can get now that does have audio description 
that does have the facility for the audio description. Um, but if you bought your Apple TV in sort of late 2011, uh, you're not going to get it. Mm. But however, if you did buy it in the last year or so, yeah, um, no you, you will have it as well. Yeah. Um, before we move on, I just want to go back and answer um, another another question that's related to yeah. this topic. Um, the person who asked about um, downloadable content, um, if we're talking about uh, the streaming service from Apple, that is downloadable content on some of their devices. So you, if you actually purchase um, a movie, um, and bear in mind that it's about the same cost as purchasing a DVD, um, uh, you can actually download that. But it is, again, it's a paper item kind of thing. So if you want to buy um, my favourite Star Trek movie, you can buy it. It will cost you 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, but you can download it and keep it forever. But th that's not streaming. Mm. So. Now, Scott, there are, I know that there are other platforms out there apart from Netflix and iView, and there's a few that come onto the market in Australia recently. Um, have you had a look at any of those other streaming services and how accessible they are? Yeah, in terms of watching things on, you know, Stan and Presto and stuff like that, it's doable. Um, you know, um, you, you can obviously um, use the iPhone or um, the PC to an extent uh, to watch them, but I guess the one difference between all those um, services and um, Netflix and iView is on those services you're not going to get any audio described content. You're going to get content that's currently on television now from you know Channel 9, Channel 7, Channel 10. Yeah, great. Thanks, Scott. Now, um, here's a question that has come through from Jamie. Uh, they say, hi, great presentation. Thanks, Jamie. How easy is it for a first-time Netflix user on an iPhone to find audio described content? You, um, sorry, Scott. Yeah, go for it. Oh, I, I was. We were all we're all going to answer at once. Um, yeah. Anyway, you'll need either a PC or a Mac to um, look at the website. You could possibly do it on in Safari on the iPhone. You, um, what you want to do is obviously log in once you've signed up and you'll find the, the listing of um, audio described content. To play the content though, um, yeah, you use the Netflix app. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that you could do is also if you're a member of um, any um, uh, ma uh, internet mailing lists or you subscribe to some blogs or um, you, uh, have, you can always, always have a look at what other people are doing. Uh, I think that on a, um, an iOS device at this time, that would be the easiest way to go if, if you um, don't actually have access to a PC to, to actually yeah, look up what you want to watch, Jamie. Yeah. Um, it, you know, there's at, at the moment, there's on, on, um, on the, uh, the Netflix, there's 34 um, uh, programs available as of right now. We're looking at the screen here. Um, I'm using a Mac and yes, I could get that information. I could arrow through them and get it. But on an, iP on an iPhone, I can't say for certain that you could do that with Safari. So, you know, read the forums, look at the blogs. Yeah, share, share the information, yeah. chat yeah, about that's it. Right. Yeah. That's the fastest way of finding out, I think. So yeah. That's how I often find out what's been done. So, yeah. yeah, so it's really, it's no easy way necessarily on an iPhone, but um, you know, getting involved, chatting with others, yeah. word of mouth. Playing the content way. obviously is fine on the iPhone, but it's finding it that's, the, that's more of the challenge. Yeah, sure. Thanks everyone. Um, so I have another question and this might differ depending on how you're watching the uh, streaming video, but this question comes from Marion. If you're streaming a movie and you're interrupted for more than five minutes, can you come back to where you left off, for example, a day or two later? Alex, any ideas on where you can stop and start? Um, certainly my experience with Netflix is that um, it always remembers where you last watched it. So um, yeah, you can do that. Um, I'm not, I don't think I've ever tried to not watch all of an iView program, so I'm not really sure about that. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I don't think it does remember. I think no, that I view doesn't. You know, you can pause it, and while your app is open, and while oh, you're logged in yeah. um, to your session, it will remember it. But yeah. as you say, on on Netflix and on the um, Apple uh, 
plat video platform. Um, it does, uh, whether it's on Netflix or their own platform, it does remember where you are. And you could, uh, you know, start watching 17 movies and it will remember each individual, where you are in each individual program. And now we are starting to come towards the end of the webinar. So I'll just put a final call out for final questions. Uh, you can text them to 0438 792 or you can email us at webinar at visionaustralia.org. But you'll have to get in pretty quickly now as we're coming to the end. Um, so we've talked a lot about audio description and, and how it's really uh, changed the way you've watched things. Um, how do we go about getting more audio description on video demand services in Australia? What can we do? Alex, what do you think well, we can the, do? Well, the first thing I would say to you is consume what's there and tell people you're doing that. So uh, just remember that all these services like Netflix, they're commercial services, they're commercial entertainment services, and they want your business. And every time that you watch something on Netflix, um, you are adding to their profits and they like that and they're more likely to do more and more. And of course, for the, uh, the stands and prestos of the world that are competing against them, tell them that you'd love to watch their shows because you've heard they've got some great content, but until it gets description on there, there's absolutely no point in you doing that. So that's the first thing I'd say to you is consume and tell people that's what you're doing and share it with your friends. And of course, the audio description on ABC iView is still a trial. So watching it's really important. Yes, and um, what they're actually doing there, um, all these services do this anyway, but they, they can totally track at any time how many people are watching it, what, what they're watching it through, which bits of it they're turning on and off and everything else. And um, with the ABC um, audio description trial, um, which is being run for the Department of Communications, it's really important that um, you give them feedback about that because they work on the basis that, oh, if they don't hear anything, they're assuming that no one's watching it. Whereas, of course, um, you may not have told them because you're saying it's a great service, I'm just enjoying it. But let them know that. That's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And that's one way of getting more. And uh, another question on a similar topic from Courtney. Uh, Media Access Australia, so you're from Media Access Australia, yep. and Vision Australia lobbying for more audio description. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And Courtney... Um, it's happening both here and Australia and being connected worldwide. So um, I think as I mentioned before, these services are just international and blind people everywhere want access to these things. So the, um, there's actually quite a coordinated uh, group of people, including Vision Australia, Media Access Australia, Blind Citizens Australia and the various um, blindness agencies around the country. And probably the simplest way if you want to get involved is there's a really easy website to remember. It's audiodescription.com.au. And there there's information about the latest campaign and links to various things connected with audio description. So, and that's not just about video on demand services. That's also about TV services. So um, if you want to get involved, and I encourage you to do that, that's a way to do that in a really coordinated way. And obviously, if these voices are joined together and we're all asking for the same thing, and we're being very careful to make sure that people in America, people in the UK, and people in Australia and New Zealand are asking for the same sorts of things, that it's more likely to happen. Mm. Thanks, and uh, we have another question that's come through, slightly different topic now, but um, we've had a question from Anne-Marie, which is, once you get the Netflix app, how do you stream the content onto a TV so others can watch? And maybe that's the same with the other platforms. How can you stream it? on a TV so others can watch? Is there a way of doing it, Paul? It really depends on the platform of um, how you actually do it. So let's, um, I'll try to be quick. Mm -hmm. If you're using an iOS device, the only real way, or the, the easiest way, let's say the easiest way, is to stream it via an Apple TV, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the um, Apple devices, including the, um, the, uh, the Macs and the MacBooks, um, laptops, um, have the facility to connect to an, um, a, an Apple TV and that allows you to stream directly. The other option is um, most um, laptops these days and many desktop PCs have um, HDMI connectors um, on them and if you have a PC and you have a modern TV like a flat screen TV it's going to have a, an HDMI connector on it. Um, it's just a matter of switching your device that is your PC or your Mac 
into a full screen mode, connect um, a cable, and you can get really long ones. Uh, at home, we've got one that's um, 10 meters long um, that can connect our laptops um, into the, um, the TV um, at, uh, um, in the lounge room. Um, Android devices also have um, the Chromecast, which is another device that you can purchase. It's about $60, $70. I suppose I should actually point out that the Apple TV is about $110 to purchase. And that does a similar thing. It allows you to wirelessly stream. So we're streaming the streaming mm -hmm. um, to the TV to allow you to, um, to share the content. So um, the, as a low vision um, person, I think that it's important to know that on these platforms, if you do um, stream um, using the Wi-Fi, you can't watch them on both devices. So as soon as you start streaming the, your video to your TV, to your Apple TV, you can't see it on your iPad. So mm -hmm. you just need to know that. Great. Thanks, Paul. And we've had a question come through from Jeffrey. How can I get technical help with streaming? Might go to you again, Paul. How can you get technical yeah. help with streaming? I guess if, you, if, if you're um, stuck setting up um, an Apple TV or your iPhone or an iOS device or an Android device and mm -hmm. um, even a PC, um, I, my first port of call if I had trouble would be to call the Vision Australia help desk. Mm -hmm. um, that's the regular Vision Australia telephone number, 1300 847466. Um, that's 1300 847466. Um, double six. Um, and if there's um, a simple question that you have about, well, how do I download this app or how do I do this, um, then we may be able to um, help you over the phone and that um, line's open um, in our normal business hours. If it's a little bit more complex, if this is all very new to you and you don't actually know how to um, use um, these devices, like if you're new to the iPhone or iPad and you're struggling a little bit with using the apps and getting things set up, I would speak to your um, Vision Australia key contact worker mm -hmm. um, and ask them to make a referral to an adaptive technology consultant or trainer. Um, if you're not currently receiving services from Vision Australia, call through to um, that number, 1300 84 74 66, and you can refer yourself into our service and make the request and be specific and say exactly what it is that you're after some um, technical support, one-on-one -on -one stuff from an adaptive technology um, person, and um, we can um, arrange something from there, whether it's you coming in and having a quick lesson on your iPad, for example, or if you need a little bit of help, perhaps setting up your um, Apple TV, we can arrange that as well. Mm. So both Scott and Paul, you're members of our adaptive technology team, so you can come and have a chat to two lovely people like Scott and Paul, and we have others in that team as well. So that's a great option. Thanks, guys. So we are actually now coming to the very end of the webinar. So I just wanted to remind people that we're going to have a transcript of tonight's webinar available as soon as we can. Um, and that's a great way if you missed something, maybe from the beginning, if you join us a little bit later or didn't quite catch some of the technical details or the numbers, uh, you can go to that transcript and it will cover everything we had uh, talked about tonight. We would actually also love to hear your feedback. So tonight was our first webinar from Vision Australia uh, for people who are blind, have low vision, talking about some different new ideas. And we would love to hear about how you found it. So did you enjoy joining in from home? Do you have any other ideas about other webinar topics we could potentially cover? We'd actually love to hear how you found it. And you can just get in touch with us by emailing what is now hopefully a very familiar email address, which is webinar at visionaustralia.org and uh, send through your feedback because we'd actually really love to hear from you. And uh, I'd like to finish by finally saying a really warm thank you to everyone who joined us tonight. Um, we hope you got a lot out of it. We really enjoyed putting it on and, and chatting tonight about all things dreaming of streaming. And I'd also like to say a really big thank you to our wonderful panel, Alex, Paul and Scott. Thank you for coming in at night time and talking to us and sharing all your knowledge and tips. It was really great to hear from you. So on that, I'll leave it and say good night, everyone. <laughs>